So this bag is just as important as my tarp when it comes to shelters. What's up guys, Dan here, Cold Cracker Bushcraft. So that's right, what's inside this bag is just important as your tarp when it comes to setting up a shelter because generally what happens when we think about our shelter system is we think about our tarp. So we're like gonna put a tarp in our bag. But you need ropes and you need tent pegs and you need toggles, you need all that accessory stuff to make this thing optimized. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, what I carry in my bag that goes along with my tarp. Where my tarp goes, pretty much this bag goes. Now before we break into this bag, um, just a quick disclaimer that what I have in here is honestly what I carry 95% of the time, but like any of our gear, we need to be able to think outside the box sometimes, depending on what the weather is looking like or what the environment that we're gonna be operating in looks like, we might need to swap some of this stuff out. So we're, we'll talk about that as we go along but this is the general kit that I carry. So tarp, yes, important. Now we're taking this from a bushcraft standpoint. We know we all love our oil cloth and wax canvas and big heavy stuff. So we are not ultralight by any means. So we're not worried about it when it comes to the hardware for this. So now in no particular order, this little drum roll, what do we got? Okay, so first thing I always carry are my ridge lines. So my ridge lines, as you can see, I have three here. I have one, two, three. Now, yes, different colors, but this is why, because over time, okay, ridge lines break and they wear out, and um, especially when you're using a trucker's hitch and you're pulling all the time, so if I just have another one laying around, I just threw it in, and it just so happens, colors um, at this point in my life don't match, which is fine, okay? So uh, the ridge lines themselves, why do I have three? So generally, when you set up a tarp configuration, you're gonna have your main ridge line that you set your tarp up on, that will constitute one. Number two, we're gonna need a ridge line to pull the back section of our tarp up. With heavier cotton canvas and oil cloth and wax canvas, you're gonna get a lot of sag in the belly of your tarp, which is absolutely normal because of the weight of the tarp. So we use a second ridge line in order to get some more cubic inches inside that tarp itself. And in the third ridge line, why? Um, well, a couple different reasons. The main two, number one, some shelter setups, which if you're interested in alternative shelter setups, click in our um, playlists. You can look under shelters. We have a ton of different stuff. Sometimes you need three ridge lines for those shelters, but it's always nice to have a backup because like I said earlier, ridge lines do break. They might get tangled up and knotted. And if it's nighttime and you just want to get your shelter set up because you're getting into camp late, just pull out your second ridge line, use it, and then go back and untangle one of the other ones. Now, uh, my ridge lines are all 30 feet in length. That seems big when you're stretching it out. Like when you're in your house and you're stretching 30 feet, you're like, this is way too big. But here's what you gotta remember. First of all, you're gonna be wrapping this around a tree. So if you have a bigger tree, you're losing all of that cordage that goes around the tree itself, and then you're taking it to another tree and wrapping it around that. So that alone eats up a lot of cordage that you otherwise would think you're not gonna be using up. And then if you do a trucker's hitch like we teach, then you're using up even more. So 30 feet is like that sweet spot that um, if you find trees, you generally can set up. If it's bigger than that, your ridge line doesn't fit, there are things you can do, but usually just like you can find trees within that range and it works out great. If you have longer extra cordage left over, you just bundle it up and you'll be fine. Now I keep all my ridge lines pre-prepped. So I have a bowline knot on one side and I have my Presic loops attached to the line. I don't ever take those things off. They're just all built on and I have the whole ridge line set up ready to go. Now on to the next thing. So we get the ridge lines, everything's set up. What do we need? Well, we're gonna need tent pegs. So here's the thing. I generally carry wooden tent pegs with me because I, just, I like the feel. We're bushcrafters, right? So I like the look of it. I like just the feel of it and I feel more more natural when I'm doing that. So I have tent pegs that are made of wood. Now here's the thing, sometimes these break, which is fine, we just go carve another one. You don't have to carry these, you can carve them, but it's nice when you carve yourself a good tent peg, you just keep it in your bag and you use it just till it breaks and then you go out and find another one. But here's the thing, during the frozen winter months here in Pennsylvania, when that ground is just solid, like you are not getting through it, these things, 
Although you can make them work, don't work the best. I usually swap them out. I know, ugh, something unnatural, right? So ABS plastic Ken pegs, they do work great, um, especially when you have to really pound these things down in the frozen ground. They work a lot better than wood. Wood, if you have to put that much pressure on to pound in, although you, they, like I said, they'll work, okay? A lot of times you get a lot of splitting and cracking in your room, your tent peg. So you're gonna be just making a lot more of these if you don't have these along. So in the winter, what I do, like I said, I'm carrying some of these, but I normally just let these in. Cause again, I'm not overly concerned with like weight and all that stuff. So what I'll do is I just throw all the tent pegs in my bag and I'm good to go. I have more than enough for everything. All right, now next thing. Wow, another temp peg. Okay, next thing is um, probably the most unneeded item in my bag, but I just found that it's a way more convenient and quick for me to do. But I end up losing these things all the time, and that is just a few small sticks that we know as toggles. Um, these things are needed when you're using those Prusik loops in order to tension out your tarp and stuff like that. Again, I'll put the link down in the description if you want to see how we set a tarp up, just a lean-to configuration. It'll be down in there. But uh, toggles. Toggles, they're great for everything, even just if you hang it up off your ridge line for a lantern or something, um, they're good and easy. But here's the thing, I do you drop these, you don't know where you drop them, they're just gone forever, even though they're right in front of you, gone, okay? So you can just pick sticks up off the ground, they work just as well. But if I myself toggles and I carve the edges off real nice and they're rounded out, I generally, I just keep a couple in my bag, it makes my life easier, so. And if I'm happy, then camp is a happy place. Okay, now second time, to last item, I keep about a three foot piece of some type of rope in this bag. Now here's why I do this. This is great for making the Marline spike hitch, which, we'll show you real quick. We just do this and we stick a toggle in there, okay? So now what I can do is I put a bowline on this end, hang this around a tree, and I can hang all my equipment, oh, upside down there. I can hang all my equipment on this thing, okay? Um, or my backpack on it, keep everything dry. So that's just part of this kit, having that piece of rope. The other thing that's nice with this is if I'm using a plow point style shelter, I don't have to run a big ridge line. I take the corner of my tarp, and I literally just run this through, and I tie this around the tree. It, it eliminates a ton of hassle setting up your ridge line. So this, just is like a multifunctional piece of rope, but I like to have a couple little pieces in there. I generally have at least one, if not three. So that's something I have in there. And then last but not least is the bag itself. So here's what's nice about this. All the extra components that we're not using, we can jam back in the bag and they're all in one place. But I like a bag that has some kind of loop on it because I can hang this off the ridge line and then it's there if I need anything or a tent peg breaks as I'm trying to adjust, it's all right there. Plus at night, I can always stick a couple things in here zipper it up and I'm good to go. So that'll just hang off my ridge line and I am set to go. So just a little idea of what Dan carries while I'm out there. I hope it gives you some good ideas. Now you can go play with your gear some more because that's what we love to do. When you're not in the woods, you're at home playing with your gear or watching Cold Cracker. And if you're not like, always watching Cold Cracker, then you gotta hit like and subscribe down below and a notification bell and you'll get those notifications and all that good stuff. And then uh, I think that's it. All right, so I'm gonna go pack all my stuff back up and go enjoy the day some more. Hope you enjoy the day and until next video, stay in the woods.